Hey, what's up everyone? It's Nick here, and before we get started with today's video, we're gonna have a quick word from our sponsor, which is Citadel 21. Citadel 21 is a Bitcoin cultural zine and displays the best of the best written content directly by the Bitcoin Taco Plebs for the Bitcoin Taco Plebs. You can read all their articles online for free or even purchase copies of all your favorite volumes, but you gotta be quick because they only sell a limited amount and they sell out pretty fast. They allow anyone and everyone to submit articles so if you're eager to write something, I highly recommend you do it. Check out their website at citadel21.com below. The link will be in the description. And now let's get on to the video. All right. What's up, class? This is Optimus Fields at My Living Truth. And we're back for an up another episode. We're at Bit or block height 668,988. And the current price is $37,875. let us go. Nick, uh, you want to you wanna, um, introduce our guest? Or? Yeah. So what's up, guys? It's Nick here. And I wanted to reach out with Optimus to Surfer Jim to present his uh, Citadel 21 article, Bitcoin as Real Estate. This gets me really bullish and it's a really cool way to think about uh, just another angle to look at Bitcoin. I heard him talk about it more on his podcast he did with uh, Cedric on the Bitcoin Matrix. So shout out Cedric. I know me and Optimus have been on his pod before as well. And um, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to Jim's episode. It was really good. But yeah, I we really wanted to have Jim on and just explain it more. So Jim... Thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I always enjoy every Wednesday night hanging with you guys. So uh, more than happy to talk about Bitcoin, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for the people watching on YouTube, I'll be I'm the one c moving around the uh, mouse cursor and I'll be scrolling through it. So hopefully I can keep up with Jim. Uh, well, whenever you're ready, I'll start. Uh, I'll start going through it. Take it away. Yeah, let's, let's get right into it. All right. So, a little introduction uh, for those who don't know who I am. Uh, I'm a general contractor. Um, I live and work on Long Island. I've had my own business for thirty, little more than thirty years, and um, I. Uh, being in business, I um, had to learn to trust, uh, people had to learn to trust me. I had to, you know, do work and trust getting paid. Um, you know, you, you learn a lot when you're running your own business. And uh, when I get introduced to Bitcoin, it was through the, the idea that you didn't have to trust anybody except the protocol. And it was, it was kind of fascinating to me. So I looked into it. And one of the things that came to me was the scarcity. It's one of the reasons why humans value anything in this world. Um, when things are scarce, they they can be more valuable, uh, like fine artwork and stuff like that. And one of the things that people have always discussed about being scarce is something like real estate. Um, and um, I heard Trace Mayer on a podcast once mention Bitcoin and the entire um supply of all the bitcoins as a big chunk of real estate and you could have a piece of it and because bitcoin is scarce like actual real estate on the planet is scarce uh it seemed to me that you could make some type of comparison so i my brain just kept going and uh way back in october of 18 i i did like one of these tweet threads where i linked a whole bunch of thoughts together which was the uh sort of the um beginning of what became this article uh, and so when Hodlnot put out a thing, they were looking for, uh, people to contribute. I turned it into an article and he was kind enough to, uh, publish it for me. So that was in volume four Citadel 21 back in July of last year. 
And um, he actually put the first quote on there. I had a I had it written a little differently, but the the article starts out the scarcity of uh, so it's titled Bitcoin is real estate, and then so we got the scarcity of land, and the first quote is uh, buy land. Uh, they're not making any more, uh, making it anymore, which was a quote by Mark Twain. Um, and, you know, whenever you would hear people discuss real estate, the idea was that, yeah, you know, if you can get the right real estate in the right place, it's going to be worth something because of that scarcity factor. Even even though there could be tons of land, land in certain areas uh, is is there's only so many, let's say, oceanfront homes. Right. You know. Uh, once you put them next to each other, you got to go behind them and now it's no longer ocean front. So there's only so many of certain things and they command more value. So um, land as real estate uh, seemed like an easy comparison. Uh, of course, humans can make some more in the beginning of this article. I, I just wrote in here, you know, we can make more. If you look at uh, the country of Dubai uh, that built a whole bunch of islands and, you know, they actually created a whole pattern, which is pretty cool from the air. Uh, you know, we can make some more real estate if we want to, but, you know, only to a certain extent. Um, so the scarcity factor uh, is one of the reasons why anything is worth more money. And, and ever since I've learned about Bitcoin, people said the value of the Bitcoin is going to be worth more and more and more as more people want some because of this limited supply. So in this article, I equate the limited supply of Bitcoin to the limited supply of land. Uh, let's look at the numbers, see how they compare. All right. So starting with the Earth's surface, land only. Um, I, so now what I did for this, I went online and checked a whole bunch of different web websites. In my original article, there was a bunch of links. As a matter of fact, some of these might be hyperlinks. Yeah, I think if you're if you're online and, and you're looking at this article, the underlying stuff are hyperlinks where I got some of my facts. So I came up with a number, 92.5 million square miles. Um, let's say uh, so if it's land only. Okay, of that... Much of it is uninhabitable because it's barren or forests or mountains or something else. Uh, so it's estimated that about 71% of all land is habitable and of that 50% is used for ag agriculture. So that gives us the other 50% to live on basically. Uh, so you, you start running the math, you end up with 65.65 million square miles, uh, remove the half for agriculture and you're down to 32.84 million square miles um, of space on which all humans must live. All right. So we go on to equate Bitcoin um, to land. Uh, so when we look at how the limited supply of Bitcoin equates to the limited supply of land, using the hard cap of Bitcoin protocol, there will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. So everybody knows that about Bitcoin. That's what that's what the ultimate limit is. Um, currently, there's about 18 and a half million in supply. Um, and there's going to be another two and a half million left uh, that'll get mined over the next roughly 100 years. Um, but of that, a lot of people have estimated that there's a whole bunch that are, are probably lost and probably lost forever. And so uh, anywhere from three to four million, and it's anybody's guess, nobody's ever really going to know because Bitcoin sitting on the blockchain are always available to be moved if someone has the private key. But if the private key is lost, but no one knows it, it could just be passed down through generations and people can see those Bitcoin on the blockchain forever, never moving, but never also knowing that the Bitcoin uh, private keys are lost. But assuming there's 3 million gone, we're going to work with a, um, an amount of Bitcoin of 18 million. Let me just read this uh, real quick. So let's do some math. All right, using the uh, available units uh, of land, um, uh, but we'll use the, all right, so what I, decided to do here was use uh, what's available in land, but what's ultimately going to be available in Bitcoin. Instead of the 21 million, I'm using 18 million. We're going to divide that up, that number up and relate that to the land, right? So if you take a square mile of land, 640 acres, um, uh, let's see, you have 32.84 million square miles times 640 acres. So that gives you 21 billion acres. And, you know, somewhere I got some calculation that said there's 7.79 billion people on the planet. So when you do the math, everybody gets about 2.69 acres. So if you looked at the available land uh, that people live on, divided it by the 7.79 billion people on the planet, everybody would get 2.69 acres. I suspect most people don't have 2.69 acres of land available to them. And yet some people have way more than that. 
Uh, some people own no land, of course. But this would be all the land just divided up equally. That's it. 18. Uh, so then if we were to, um, uh, I'm sorry, looking down the article uh, to the next line in bold type, the 18 million divided by 7.79 uh, billion people gives you 200 and uh, point, uh, zero, I'm sorry, point zero zero two three one zero six five Bitcoin per person. So if you divide up all the land equally, you get uh, 2.69 acres. And then I, the math is if you do the uh, divide up all the Bitcoin between the people, you everybody gets what amounts to 231,065 Satoshis, which are the uh, individ, uh, the um, the units within each Bitcoin. Uh, for those who may not be aware, every Bitcoin contains within 100 million smaller units that we call Satoshis. So if you took 18 million Bitcoin divided by 7.79 billion people, equally, we would all get 231,000 Satoshis. Okay. So if, if we think of uh, the Bitcoin blockchain as real estate, and we compare that to actual Earth real estate, and you owned, you know, 0 0.00231 worth of total Bitcoin real estate ever available, and so did everybody else, you would own the equivalent of 2.69 actual Earth real estate if it was also divided equally. So to some, that's quite a lot. To others, it's a spec. Uh, and, you know, such is the case with Bitcoin uh, as in actual real estate. Some have most, you know, a few, a few people have most of the Bitcoin. Some have a little and most have none. Most of the people out there in the world have none of this Bitcoin yet. Right. So there's a handful of people who have a real lot of it. And then there's a bunch of people in the middle that have a bunch of it. And then there's people that don't have any that may be listening to this right now, wondering if they should get some. I, of course, I would highly encourage that you do. And part of the reason that I'm having this discussion is to convince you that it's worth it. So uh, in this example, if you were able to acquire one Bitcoin, that would be the equivalent of owning a thousand and forty eight acres of actual earth real estate. So if you took uh, 0.23, 0 0.00231065 of a Bitcoin, that ends up being 1,432.7th of a Bitcoin, if you do the math. I hope I did that right. Uh, and so if you just do, you run all this math out, anybody could read this stuff. It would be like owning uh, 1,164 acres of land if you owned one Bitcoin, right? Now, a Bitcoin today is worth, uh, what did Optimus say? It was around... 37,000 something when we started, it's around 37,500 something right now uh, to buy a, a full Bitcoin. But if you were to run the math here, we're saying that if you, if you had a whole Bitcoin uh, and you equated that to real estate on land, so this one Bitcoin, which would be 1 21 millionth of the supply of Bitcoin, would be the equivalent of a 21 million supply of all the land, which is 1,100 acres. So for about $38,000, you could own 1,100 acres of land. Or imagine if you could, let's just say that. Uh, if somebody gave you an opportunity to buy 1,100 acres of land, it was only $38,000. Uh, That's a good deal in most places. Maybe in some places it's a terrible deal. But um, that's pretty inexpensive for a lot of real estate uh, in the world, especially a lot of worthwhile real estate. So when you think about... Um, what is one Bitcoin worth in terms of uh, the supply of Bitcoin and relate that to what is that same amount of land versus the supply of land, you could see that it's uh, quite a lot. But even your fair share, let's say all the Bitcoin divided by all the people on the planet, you'd still have the equivalent of a couple acres, almost three acres of land. And most people don't have near that amount of land. Uh, and so that's actually still quite a fair amount to own if you're going to get a chunk of this Bitcoin real estate. So um, let's uh, let's go down and discuss something that I believe is going to take place. I think eventually one day, Bitcoin, which I think is the best money humans have ever seen, uh, is going to be the world reserve currency. So if it was, um, how would that look? Uh, and so I, I did a little bit of hypothetical stuff here. Most people who understand and support Bitcoin protocol believe that someday Bitcoin could be the world reserve uh, money. I believe this, but feel it may take a generation or two. That's my personal belief. It could play out for some time. Um, so uh, each each Bitcoin, as I said earlier, is divisible by 100 million small units known as Satoshis or Sats for short. So um, it's evenly distributed. As I, I mentioned, each person gets uh, 231,000 of these Satoshis. Um, uh, if and, and so here's the thing about a supply of money. Um, 
humans humans can put any value. I mean, the price of a Bitcoin was a lot lower than it was one day, and now it's up to thirty, almost thirty eight thousand dollars. So the value of those stats have changed over time, and they can be anything. And so if everybody on the planet had to use this one supply of Bitcoin for its money, the price of one sack could be anything, including a dollar, which would mean if you had 231,000 of these things, you might have the equivalent purchasing power of $231,000. So if you bought your fair share right now, 231,000 sats and sat on it, and it got to that value, maybe whatever that costs you today could be worth that much in purchasing power because of the limited supply once enough people decided they were going to use this as their money. So um, I wrote here, uh, in free markets, all items, including money, are valued by each individual as they subjectively value those things in their lives that matter to them. Over time, a generally accepted current value becomes ubiquitous throughout society so that people can facilitate trade. Although all value changes all the time and are different for all people in all places, price fluctuations tend to level out over time and space, as is the case today. People hold dollars, believing them to have the same purchasing power in the future as they do today. Uh, this isn't true, yet most people still value dollars roughly the same for the same items in a given geographic location. You know, something could be a little more money here, a little less money, you know, in, in Central America, let's say, for the same item. Uh, but in that same geographic area, just as the same geographic area I am, similar items are going to be priced similarly. All right. So one sat could be worth a penny or a hundred bucks. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever people agree on. Uh, and so if we talked about one sat as a dollar, then one Bitcoin would be worth a hundred million in USD purchasing power right now. So imagine if you got yourself, you know, $38,000 got one Bitcoin and, you know, one day it's worth a hundred million dollars in purchasing power. Well, I think it will be one day. And as I said, it could be a generation or two, but imagine if you can pass that down to your great grandkids. Imagine how cool they would think their great grand parents were that they were that smart to get some of this stuff and leave it, you know, as an inheritance. I mean, this is unfathomable, you know, for a lot of people. But if you take the time to look into this, this is very, very possible. And in my opinion, very likely. So I wrote on here to me, that's reason enough to own at least one Bitcoin if you can. And I even wrote it to imagine your great grandchildren's amazing and how smart you would be. I, I didn't I wasn't reading that when I just said it before because it's just in my head. But there it is. I wrote it anyway. Right. But I did this when the value of Bitcoin was 9,000, which is only like not even a year ago. So it's gone up quite a bit since then. Uh, but even at 9,000, I thought it was a lot. But what it means is that back then at, at, for nine grand, you could have got your fair share for twenty dollars and seventy nine cents. That's not a lot. You know, imagine spending twenty dollars and seventy nine cents and in three generations, it's worth one hundred million dollars to somebody that knows that you were their, you know, great grandparent or something. That's like pretty mind boggling. And yet it could happen. Um, a lot has to happen for it to take place. But we are totally on track. I mean, when you think about what Bitcoin started out and what it's worth today, it's quite a lot. Now, I'm going to divert over to a spreadsheet I did because I want to throw out a few other numbers here. So um, I already mentioned the amount of people on the planet, the amount of acres. What I didn't mention was the total money supply. I found a statistic online that says that the total money supply is $95 trillion. And, but that doesn't even include a whole bunch of derivatives and things like land and gold and all kinds of other things. I, I was just thinking of the money supply. And I did a calculation uh, that said if you took that much money and divided it by all the people, each person would only get a little over twelve thousand dollars. I was a little surprised to find that number to be that small. It's it's the equivalent of two hundred thirty one thousand sats of two point six nine acres of land. If you chopped up the entire worldwide money supply based on that statistic, all the people would get twelve thousand dollars. But for some people, that's like a fortune. There's people all over the world that have don't have ten cents, you know, to their name. Uh, so, uh, but as we know, money is very unevenly dispersed around the world, as will Bitcoin for, for much of human history. Some people will be very good at holding on to it and other people it will go right through their fingers like other money does. Uh, but uh, if you had one Bitcoin worth of the money supply, right, your equal share of the money supply, you'd have five million dollars in spending power right now. Uh, that's of the nine ninety five trillion dollars. So that's a, a, another cool way to think of it. Like if you owned one Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network now, 
and it and it represented an equal share of all the actual money on the planet, which we know is not divided up equally. You'd have five million dollars, five million three hundred fifteen thousand two hundred and eighty-six dollars worth of purchasing power uh, for that the equivalent of that one bitcoin. Uh, but but we know that they keep adding to the money supply. They keep messing that up. So that's no good for us. You know, when they keep flooding the supply of money, the share that you have of, of dollars of fiat money uh, gets diluted. So you have a, a smaller percentage of the overall pie. And this is one of the things that you got to think about it in terms of a money. Uh, Bitcoin is scarce and U.S. dollars and all other fiat currencies are not. And so your share of that pool of money is getting debased all the time. You're losing a, a piece of it. And, you know, that calculation was to say if it could be static and everybody could get the same amount, you'd have 5,300,000 worth if you, if you own the equivalent of one twenty-one millionth of the supply. So get some of this Bitcoin right now where you still can when half the world doesn't even know what the heck it is because it's going to be worth like millions and millions of dollars worth of purchasing power. Anyway, let me keep going. I, I digress over to other stuff. Uh, so I did go down and, and try to equate, you know, what's your fair share, your 231,000 sats based on different prices of a Bitcoin, right? So as of right now, in my little spreadsheet, I did a I did a little formula thing. So I can plug in 37. I'm looking at Coinbase Pro 878 is the current price. So to get your fair share of Bitcoin, it costs you $87.52. Right now, right this very second, if you had $87.52, you can get 231,000 Satoshis at $37,878, right? So that's your fair share of the entire Bitcoin network of all the Bitcoin that will ever be available, 18 million, not 21 million. Remember, that's how I did the math. Um, that costs you $87 right now. So you could... For every child, grandchild, heir that you think you want to have every month, buy another $87 worth of Bitcoin and you can leave some to all of them. Like and be the hero of the patriarch of your or matriarch of your family for generations to come. You will be hailed. Your picture will be over everybody's mantle that you were the hero of the family because you made everybody rich because you just bought a fair share for each of your descendants. It would be that easy. This is not an expensive thing to own. You got to think in terms of the percentage of the supply of all the Bitcoin. All right, so going backwards, if you had gotten some at 10,000, it would have cost you 2310, 20,000, You could look at the article, it goes all the way up to a million. So if you're even at a million dollars Bitcoin, it's $2,300, 231065 to buy your fair share of the entire Bitcoin network, even when one Bitcoin costs a million bucks. A lot of people in America can afford 2,300 bucks right now and get way, way more than their fair share uh, in, in terms of the way I'm phrasing this thing. So um, let's just keep going down. Uh, all right, so I, I, I'm of the opinion, I wrote here, uh, don't be concerned about its value going forward at any purchase level. The value of a single unit of Bitcoin, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the value a single unit of Bitcoin can hold will constantly increase over time, no matter how many people own some, uh, how many are left to be issued or what the exchange rate or purchasing power is at any given time. Uh, I can confidently say, confidently say this because if Bitcoin is the world's money, all things will go down in value relative to the Bitcoin, a relative to Bitcoin as more goods and services are produced minus those destroyed. The world has seen net growth in the value of all things over time. So there is no reason to believe humans will not continue to produce more goods and services over time than those destroyed over time. And if the supply doesn't grow, which we know it won't, then the value of each sack can only increase relative to those items it can be traded for. So in a nutshell, it doesn't matter if the price of a Bitcoin is a million, 10 million or 100 million, and you just decide to buy some now. You can sit on that and in a year or five years or 10 years, you can probably purchase more with it than you could have at the time when you bought it. Because if, in fact, humanity produces more stuff every day than it destroys on net, and they have this one pool of money to work with, the all the Bitcoin divided by 100 million units, and we can divide them further on second layer solutions like the Lightning Network. So you can use even smaller than Satoshi units, but that's another discussion. Um, 
you can see the ability for every Satoshi to continue to increase in value because they have to be split up and used to buy more things. And so ultimately the, the money becomes worth more and the things become really worth less uh, or in, in terms of the way you can view it in the way your purchasing power is, you're getting more purchasing power. That's the whole point. And so um, there's never a time not to buy some Bitcoin, right? And sure, you might time the market poorly because as it's being adopted as a money in society, the exchange rate does fluctuate quite a bit. It goes up, it goes down. So if you bought some, you know, a few weeks ago at 42,000, you're still underwater a little bit. But, uh, you know, in the current market, you're not going to have to wait long for it to be over that. That could happen by tomorrow, uh, the way these prices are swinging. Um, and so what you're looking at here is the, the real-time adoption of the best form of money humanity has ever created, and there's a scarce amount. So I wrote here at the end, securing generational wealth with beer money. Back to today's USD value, investing in the value of a 12-pack. So I, at the time I wrote it, it was like a 12-pack of beer as well, in, in, um, into some real estate on the most secure most scarce, most immutable, most censorship resistant value storage and transfer system ever created can be what secures the prosperity of multiple future generations of your family. If worldwide adoption spreads quickly, anyone alive today can potentially see a world where Bitcoin is the one recognized money. In that case, your beer money will, your beer money will likely provide a cushy retirement. But what if Bitcoin fails? No one knows. You know, it, there's a lot of reasons that people believe that it could still fail, right? Um, so we, uh, what we do know is that investments are being made into Bitcoin all over the world from every angle you could think of. People are building things. They're coordinating businesses, helping each other. We're doing things like this educational stuff. People are writing books. Uh, the adoption is increasing every day and people are purchasing left and right. Uh, people are opening up exchanges all over the place and some people are buying and holding, believing that this is for my future. Right. So this is happening all around. A lot of people don't see it yet, but it's going on. The closer you look, the more busy you will see that this ecosystem is. Um, uh, so, you know, this article I wrote in here, this article is a perfect example. I don't get paid for this. Uh, I hope that at the very least it will cause just one person to look more closely at Bitcoin. And in doing so, their life could change for the better. Uh, if it changes two people and then they change two more people, we'll have the planet covered in no time. You know, we have an exponential effect of people telling other people, which is actually kind of happening. Right. Uh, so there's a, I wrote here, there's this massive new asset class in the world and Bitcoin sits on top as king. The asset class is, you know, I just want to point out, I don't really want to discuss it, but something that is collectively known as cryptocurrency. And because Bitcoin is open source, people have copied it and there's now thousands of them. Um, nobody that uh, knows me believes me to think any of them are worth uh, even discussing, but it's an asset class. And there's a lot of people out there that are looking at cryptocurrencies as something to invest money in. Um, I would really, really... Uh, advise you to take that super slow and do a huge amount of investigation if you think you want to put any of your money into any other cryptocurrency other than bitcoin i don't advocate it one single bit i don't think any of them are going to last bitcoin is the only one that matters i can go on and on about why but uh in a nutshell i wouldn't i wouldn't be going into uh, you know a whole bunch of these other ones but we have this new asset class and bitcoin sits on top as king and if you ignore it i predict you're going to have regrets um you're not going to be alone. A lot of people are going to have regrets. There's a giant group of humans that discount Bitcoin's promise and its abilities right now. Well, every day you get detractors and FUD articles and all kinds of people that think it's, you know, it's dead. It's been, it's got like hundreds of obituary articles. It's already died hundreds of times. It's, a, it's the biggest joke going, right? Um, uh, but, you know, given what's transpired since it was, uh, the code was launched in January of 2009, um, can you really not, you know, can you really justify not diverting some beer money just in case, you know, just a little bit? I think even Satoshi had a quote like, um, if I, if you don't have time to understand it, I don't have time to explain it or something. One of you guys could correct me on that. But it's it's like the, the meme out there now, like, you know, have fun staying poor. If you can't do just a little bit for this right now, then, you know, you're blowing it big time. Right. So since its inception, Bitcoin has had the highest return on investment than anything else ever in history. Right. Um, 
the first USD exchange rate, I think I got this out of Safe Dean's book, The Bitcoin Standard, was about 1600 Bitcoin for $1, which is hard to comprehend. At the current Bitcoin price, 1600 Bitcoin is worth 60, not million, 60, wait a minute. That, yeah, sixty million six hundred four thousand dollars. So one dollar twelve years ago, one U.S. dollar twelve years ago bought you sixteen hundred bitcoins. You're sitting on sixty million worth of purchasing power today. That is hard to comprehend, as far as I'm concerned. Right? Um, uh, let's just see here. Uh, the first uh, purchase of any real world item for Bitcoin was ten thousand Bitcoin for two pizzas. Uh, a lot of people know the story. A guy named Laszlo who did this more than once, he said. I listened to an interview where he said he bought pizzas more than once and spent $10,000. So if you had 10,000 Bitcoin back in the day, you would have had today $378,780,000 million, 700, million, worth of purchasing power. $378 million, And the guy bought two pizzas with that. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. Uh, and he said he spent a hundred over a hundred thousand Bitcoin on pizzas and other things. So here's a guy helping to get Bitcoin adopted. This is when it was worth fractions of a penny. And he said, Hey man, this stuff's worth fractions of a penny. I can spend it on some stuff. And so he did hundred thousand Bitcoin. He spent worth $3,787,800,000. So the guy spent $3 billion worth of purchasing power in the, just since Bitcoin was invented 12 years ago. He's our freaking hero, Laszlo. Thank you for helping to bootstrap Bitcoin to the world because it's guys like him that made this thing happen, right? So I wrote big bold letters. Have I gotten your attention yet, right? You may look really stupid one day if you didn't figure out sooner that you should have secured some Bitcoin. You won't feel as stupid, however, if you diverted a few hundred or a few thousand dollars just in case and it didn't work out. Chances are no one will even notice, but they and you will notice if you didn't, despite having the opportunity. If you read this far, thanks. If you guys put up with my my dictation, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate any feedback. Um, have a nice day. Buy some Bitcoin. Help promote sovereign hard money. And uh, I can't wait to see how it plays out. To me, it's like a movie that takes years to watch. I've been watching it for about four years now, and it is fascinating. So nice. welcome. Welcome that, to Bitcoin. That was incredible, Jim. And Jim, the, the quote that you were looking for, uh, Satoshi's got two quotes. It's uh, just in case it catches on, it'd be a good idea to get some. That's a Satoshi quote. And then Excellent. the other one, the other one is um, the volume of Bitcoin is either going to be extremely high or it's going to be zero, right? And right, that's Satoshi's quote as well. We all know where the volume is, right? Right. So uh, yeah, those sure. are two very wise quotes, and I think they apply perfectly to uh, your awesome presentation, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Nico, if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free. Nico, I was literally just about to say that quote about the um, you. It might make sense to get some in case it ca catches on, and like that goes perfectly with uh, what Jim was saying about the beer money. I mean, like I remember back and like when we were deep in the bear market, I was explaining this to my parents, and I was like, for eleven dollars you can get your fair share of, you know, 230,000 something stats. And then you'll have just enough and more than anyone else could, you know, ever own if it was evenly distributed. And now that $11 is like, like what Jim said, like $87. Almost $87. Like, we're going up and it's only going to get more expensive over time. Yep. Yeah, I hope people get it. You know, scarcity is the thing that humans have valued for all of our existence. And this asset class, this Bitcoin thing has this scarcity and no one's been able to break it. Um, billion dollar companies are now putting their treasuries into this thing. They they got the money to push the price up. You know, we're, we're lucky. I mean, you'd be very lucky to get a full Bitcoin at this point. Most people do not have $37,000 at their disposal. And by the time they save it up, the Bitcoin's going to cost twice that. So it's, it's, it's already difficult for most of the world to get, you know, a full Bitcoin. And I don't know. Yeah. I think a full Bitcoin is completely out of many people's reach. And 
I was having a conversation uh, yesterday and this was a friend I went to high school with. And I remember telling him and shilling him Bitcoin hard back deep in the bear market when we were around like, you know, three, four K and he just wasn't interested in it at, at all. And when I was talking yesterday, he was like, man, like I really want to get some, but it's 30, you know, $34,000. And like, should I, he, he asked me if I should, uh, he asked me my thoughts on Dogecoin and I was like, dude, stay away from all the shit. Just focus on Bitcoin. I was like, it, you'll be surprised how fast, you know, your stats add up. But, uh, I agree. Like, I don't think he'll ever see a full coin in his wallet just starting now at the very start of the 2021 bull run. If you have, or if you have the privilege or the luck either, or to, uh, to own one Bitcoin uh, to kind of add to Jim's presentation, you have to understand that you are part of the new 1%. There's not enough million there. There's not enough millionaire. There's not enough Bitcoin to go to all the world's millionaires right now. So if you own one Bitcoin, just one, you have to understand, dude, that you like, you know, to, like in five, 10 years, you are going to be sitting very pretty and you're going to be very, you're going to, you're going to love your past self. And, uh, you know, exactly what I think Jim said it the best. Your your future generations are going to worship you as, as you know, as like, you're, you're going to be mythical, to say the least. Bullish. Yeah, could you imagine owning one Bitcoin, right? So there's more than 21 million millionaires, right? So what Nico's saying is that not every millionaire can have a full Bitcoin if they all wanted one. And since we already know lots of people who aren't millionaires in the fiat realm own a Bitcoin or more, um, for every Bitcoin, for every millionaire to want one, they, they literally can't get one. And if it's the money system of the world, that millionaire becomes broke. He can't transfer enough of his value into enough units of these things or put it a different way. His, his millions of dollars worth of value gets him a half a Bitcoin. Right. So what does that mean for the value of a Bitcoin? That means the Bitcoin you own is worth you know, twice what that guy's what his worth used to be in the fiat realm. But when the money he was using became debased, which is happening in, before our eyes, that guy who owns the big house on the water and the big boat and is worth millions, all of a sudden can't even get himself a Bitcoin, can't even move his wealth into the Bitcoin system because nobody will sell him a Bitcoin. They'll take all his wealth for a quarter of a Bitcoin. Sorry, dude, you missed it. Right? Could you imagine? You're just some dude like me, <laughs> and guys with millions and billions of dollars can't ever own the amount of Bitcoin that I might be able to own because I've seen this thing already for years. This is mind-boggling to me, absolutely off the charts, mind-boggling to me. So whatever, get as much as you can get. You're still ahead of most of the freaking world at this point, literally. For a hundred bucks or less, is your fair share. Come on, this is easy. All right. I said enough. <laughs> Beautiful, Jim. I really like the framing that you, you put in the article for the price of beer money, get your fair share. And uh, I was looking over here to wrap my head around exactly how big an acre is. Cause you know, like I know what an acre is, but to visualize it, um, I, I Googled it and one acre is equal to 43,560 feet or 4,046.86 meters. And so for someone out there that, that wants to visualize how big one acre is, it's essentially um, like 76% of a football field. So for, as Jim says, the price of beer money, you can own, what do we have over here? 2.69 acres. So roughly that's like two football fields yeah a little i land. think it's yeah i think it's a little more than two football fields of land for the price of beer money like man that's that's a visual for people wow right and if you own if you owned a whole bitcoin and you owned a thousand acres of land oh, oh. <laughs> it's like hard it's a that's a lot you know i don't know man yeah i this agree is a really interesting really interesting thing you know i for those listening, maybe for, for people who are hearing this thing and they don't even own Bitcoin, they're still trying to learn about it. Um, you're, you, what you're being exposed to is a new money, 
right? This is not a stock. This is not a company. There's no individual or group of people directly in charge of this thing. It was invented as open source code. A bunch of people agreed to run the same code. It got adopted by more and more and more people. The code did get changed and fixed and altered a little bit here and there. But for the most part, it stayed the same. Uh, it has been run in such a way that nobody's been just kicked off. Like There's nobody in charge. So you got this free market money in the form of a digital protocol that runs on the Internet. Right. This is what this thing is. This is a protocol for money. It is the best form of money humans have ever seen, right? So if you don't understand this concept, this is a, a whole new paradigm. What you're looking at is not something like a company that builds a product. Uh, this can't be shut off by a government. It can't be seized if you know how to secure it. So you could take the value of this thing anywhere in the world with you. You can't take your gold or your motorcycle collection or your real estate across you know borders and take that value somewhere else unless you convert it into some type of money bitcoin's the best form of that so you have to wrap your head around a concept that most people don't ever think about which is what is money and and where does it come from and how does it get its value this is where we've all been all of us that understand bitcoin we've all been down the bitcoin rabbit hole we've learned about money where it comes from and why when the government's just print more and more of it the, the stuff you hold becomes worth less that's why this whole scarcity factor plays into why Bitcoin is worth as what it is and why it's going to continue to be worth a lot of money. And on top of just the scarcity, it's the protocol, the network, the way it was grown, the way Satoshi birthed it into uh, existence and then disappeared. So there is nobody governments can go after. There's no door that someone can knock on and say, hey, shut this thing off. It's already too late for that. This is a unique thing that humanity has never, ever seen before. It's a one of a kind. That's why all the clones are not Bitcoin. All the other thousands of cryptocurrencies are not Bitcoin and they never will be Bitcoin. They never, ever, 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 ever will be Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only Bitcoin ever. Get it straight. Please, please, please. Bitcoin is the only thing that matters. The others are junk, right? So just run away quick. Bitcoin is it. It's important. It is the most important invention humans have ever seen because money as the most important invention humans have ever come up with. We now have it in its best form, a digital form that no individual controls and it's fair and no one can stop you from using it. No one can kick you out. They can't take away your YouTube channel, your, your Bitcoin channel. You want some Bitcoin? No one can stop you. No one can stop you. It's This is a... A unique animal, a unique thing humanity's never seen before, people. This is unique. You must look past this Bitcoin, this podcast, at what Bitcoin is. You got to go past my words and what you've heard tonight if you're still learning about this. It's just, there's so much more to know. Thank you. Let's go, Jim. Well, you know we're all fans. <clears throat> excuse me, we're all fans of Jim's rant, so we know you could probably keep going for another hour. But uh, I think this will do awesome job to uh, get people's heads going on uh, what the price of Bitcoin will be in the future. So uh, personally, I'd like to thank you for coming out and taking your time to do this. And um, yeah. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You are right. I can talk all night. <laughs> so if anybody else wants to talk, speak now. Well, but, uh, we'll thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We'll get him in on a teacher's lounge. So stick around, guys. Good. And we'll see you at the next episode. Thanks for coming out. Peace.